This is the outline for causation within negligence. The actual cause and proximate cause will be analyzed to determine if defendant's breach of duty was the actual and proximate cause of plaintiff's damages. The actual cause test. Actual cause is the factual determination of whether or not the defendant's act was the cause in fact or actually caused the plaintiff's harm as determined by the following appropriate tests. There are four causation tests. When there is a single defendant, use the but for tests. The test for a single defendant is whether but for the defendant's volitional act or omission, the incident or injury would not have happened. When you have multiple defendants, there are two tests. The first test is the substantial factor test. If multiple causes bring about the injury in any one alone would have been sufficient to cause the injury, all parties cause the harm. But if the defendant's conduct was a substantial factor, then that is the cause in fact. The second test for multiple defendants is the alternative causes approach. If two or more defendants act and only one causes injury, but liability is indeterminable, then all are liable unless a defendant can definitely prove who was responsible. The burden shifts to the defendant. If you have industry defendants, you use the market share test. This is used for industry cases such as pharmaceutical companies. Proximate or legal cause, limited to foreseeable results. When the defendant's conduct sets off a chain of events, but the consequences are so unusual or far removed from the original incident, the court will limit liability to those results that were foreseeable. Even if there is an unusual chain of events, if the result was foreseeable, the defendant will be held to the direct cause of the plaintiff's damages, unless there is an unforeseeable, independent, intervening force that breaks the natural chain of events set off by the defendant. For direct cause cases, the general rule is defendant is generally liable for direct cause of plaintiff's harm, but consider the following four statements to hold liable. First, the defendant is only liable for foreseeable results within the risk created by his negligence. Second, if the chain of events is uninterrupted, D is liable for foreseeable results even if unusual and regardless of the manner or timing. Third, if the injury suffered is foreseeable but not reasonably anticipated due to a pre-existing condition that the plaintiff may have had, defendant is still held liable. Four, in indirect cases, considering the following to hold liable, defendant's act created the risk or was concurrent to the creation of the risk. This ends the causation outline audio.